While searching for inspiration for my next video, I came across this website that recently received an awards honorable mention. The website had some really cool animations, but the one that caught my eye the most was this text displacement effect which was present across all pages. Whenever you move your cursor over the text, it distorts within a certain radius, creating a dynamic sort of fluid motion. I found it super satisfying, so I decided to recreate it from scratch. After a few hours of experimenting, I managed to build a similar effect using only JavaScript without any additional animation libraries. You can see I've applied it to both the H1s and the paragraph text where it moves individual characters in headings while for paragraph text it distorts the words. In today's video, I'll show you exactly how you can achieve this effect using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. For pro members, I've also shared a Next.js version of this project which you can access through the link in the description. If you find my work helpful, drop a like and if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more cool animations. Alright, let's dive into the code. For the HTML, we are keeping it simple and minimal. I've added a container that holds just a few elements, two h1s and a paragraph with some placeholder text. Each h1 has the class anim header and the paragraph has anim text. These classes are important because we'll apply the text displacement effect only to these specific elements. That means you can freely add other content to the page without affecting them. Just make sure they don't have these classes. And that's it for this structure. Now let's move on to styling. First, I'm resetting the default margins and padding to make sure everything is consistent across the page. The body has a dark background with white text. I've also set a custom font, giving it a modern feel. Of course, you can swap it out for any font you prefer. The container spans the full viewport width and height with padding for spacing. It's set up as a flex container, centering everything both vertically and horizontally. I've also added a gap between the elements to ensure they don't feel cramped. For the anim text, I've gone with a comfortable font size, a light font weight and justified text alignment to match the look of the original website. I've also enabled font smoothing to make the text look crisp. The anim header is much larger, sized dynamically using viewport width so it scales easily on different screen sizes. Then, I've defined two key classes, word and letter. These are essential and we'll need those while breaking the text into individual parts for the displacement effect. Both are positioned relatively and set as inline blocks, making sure they move independently when the effect is applied. Additionally, I've added margins to create spacing between words so they don't overlap awkwardly. And to optimize performance, I've also set will change transform, which tells the browser to prepare for animations in advance making the effect smoother and more efficient. And that's it for styling. Now let's jump into the fun part, bringing this effect to life with JavaScript. We start by listening for the DOM content loaded event. This ensures that the script runs only after the HTML document is fully loaded. Next, we define a function called animate text elements, which takes in two parameters. Selector, which specifies which elements we want to target for the animation. Split by, which determines whether we are splitting the text into words or letters for applying the effect. Inside the function, we select all elements matching the given selector using query selector all method, which allows us to target multiple elements at once. Next, we loop through each of these selected elements to process the text individually. Here, we define two variables. Elements, this will store the individual words or letters after splitting the text. Element type, this helps us identify whether we are working with words or letters. Next, we check what the split by parameter is set to. If it's set to words, we split the text based on spaces using the trim and split methods. The regular expression ensures that we correctly separate words while ignoring extra spaces. We then set the element type to word. Once we determine that the split by parameter is set to letters, we need to break down each word into its individual characters. To do this, we first split the entire text into an array of words then we loop through each word using for each method where we get both the word itself and its index within the sentence. Inside this loop, we go a step further by using a for loop to iterate through each letter in the current word. Every character is then pushed into the elements array, effectively isolating every letter as a separate element. But there is one more important step. We need to preserve spaces between words to ensure the original sentence structure remains intact. 
To do this, after processing each word, we check if it's not the last word in the sentence. If that's the case, we push a space character into the array. This prevents the words from sticking together when we reconstruct the text later. Finally, we set element type to letter to indicate that we are working with individual characters rather than the full words. Once the text is fully processed into words or letters, we clear the text container's content by setting text content to an empty string. This is important because we are going to replace the original text with the newly created span elements for each word or letter. At this stage, we have successfully prepared the text for animation by breaking it down into manageable parts. The next step is to wrap each one inside a span element so we can animate them individually. So first, we create an empty animated elements array. This will store all the words or letters along with their positions so we can later apply movement effects to them. Next, we loop through the elements array where each item is either a single word or a single letter depending on how we split the text earlier. Before wrapping the text, there is one important check. If we are working with letters and the element is a space, we simply append a space to text container and move on. This ensures that spaces between words remain intact. Now, for every actual character or word, we create a span element using create element method. We assign it the appropriate class, either word or letter, so it can have the styles we set in CSS. Then, we set its text content to be the word or letter itself and append it to the text container. If we are working with words, we need to make sure spaces between them remain. So, after adding a word, we check if it's not the last word in the sentence and if so, we manually insert a space. At this point, we have successfully restructured the original text replacing it with spans that allows independent animation for each word or letter. Next, we store some positional data for each span inside the animated elements array. We keep track of 5 key properties for each element. Original X and Original Y store the element's initial position before any animation happens. Current X and Current Y represent the element's current position while being animated. Target X and Target Y hold the element's destination position which will calculate dynamically when the cursor moves. After storing these properties, we use a set timeout function to run a small delay before retrieving each element's position. Inside this function, we loop through each element, grab its bounding rectangle, and calculate its center position using its left, top, and width or height values. This ensures we have precise initial coordinates, allowing smooth animations when we start applying movement. With this setup complete, we are now ready to start tracking the mouse movement and updating these positions dynamically. So the next step is to track the mouse movement and calculate how each element should respond. We start by adding an event listener for the mouse movement. This ensures that every time the cursor moves, we capture its current position on the screen. The cursor's X and Y coordinates are retrieved to determine where the user is pointing at any given movement. Next, we define two key values. The radius determines the area of influence around the cursor. Elements inside these radius will be affected, while those outside will remain still. The max displacement defines the maximum distance an element can move when the cursor is nearby. The closer the cursor gets, the stronger the movement effect. Now, for each element, we retrieve its original position, which we stored earlier when the page loaded. To calculate how much an element should move, we first find the difference in position between the element and the cursor along both axes. Using this, we calculate the exact distance between the cursor and the element. This follows the Pythagorean theorem, which helps us determine the straight line distance between two points based on their x and y differences. With this distance calculated, we determine how much the element should move. If the element is inside the defined radius, we apply a displacement force. The closer the element is to the cursor, the stronger the force. The movement effect is determined by subtracting the element's distance from the maximum radius, ensuring that elements near the cursor move more while those at the edges move less. The target X and Y positions are updated accordingly, making the movement feel more smooth and organic. If the element is outside the radius, we reset its target displacement to zero so it smoothly returns to its original position. At this stage, we have successfully calculated how much each element should move based on the cursor's position. Now we need to smoothly animate these movements so the text displacement effect feels fluid and dynamic. To ensure that movement happens smoothly rather than instantly snapping into place, we define an animation function that runs continuously. First, we introduce a load factor which controls how smoothly the elements move. A value of 0.1 means instead of jumping directly to the target position, the element moves 10% of the way toward it on each animation frame. 
This creates a fluid and natural easing effect rather than an abrupt transition. We then loop through each animated element and update its current position using interpolation. The formula works by taking the difference between the target position and the current position, then moving a small percentage of that difference on every frame. The effect is that the element gradually eases toward its target rather than moving it in a sudden jump. Once we calculate the new position, we apply it by updating the transform property using CSS Translate. This allows the element to shift smoothly along the both x and y axis based on how far it should move. To keep this animation running continuously, we call request animation frame function which tells the browser to keep updating the animation every frame. This method is highly optimized for performance and ensures that the effect runs smoothly without unnecessary resource usage. Finally, we call the animation function once to start the loop and from that point onward, it continuously updates, making the displacement effect dynamic and responsive. At the end, we apply this effect to both the paragraph text and the headings, ensuring that words and individual letters respond dynamically to cursor movement. With everything in place, we now have a fully functional text displacement effect powered entirely by JavaScript and CSS transforms running smoothly. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.